Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Is this a good volume? Yeah? Okay, cool. So, firstly, two things before we begin. Has anyone ever seen the TV show Adventure Time? Yes, you're in the right place, fantastic. If you haven't, you're also gonna leave here not only feeling a little bit pumped to learn more languages, but also to go and watch Adventure Time, hopefully. Um, and secondly, there are some intentional mistakes throughout this presentation. And uh, so see if you can count them, and I'll tell you how many at the end. <laughs> you can probably get a little tally, first of all, from the first slide. Okay, so we'll just let a couple of people more come in, and then we'll begin. Grab a seat, grab a seat. You're keeping tally. <laughs> No, it's okay, there's no detention, don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, I figured that the best way to start this was to uh, get to know me a little bit, if you don't already. So, hello, this is me. Yay, a long time ago, a long, long time ago, and uh, I, French was the first foreign language that I spoke. I'm an English native speaker, if you can't tell. But French was the first foreign language that I learned. At this point in time, taken in Disneyland by the Mickey Mouse, or Minnie Mouse ears, can you tell? Um, I spoke a few words of French, not very much. And I definitely made lots of mistakes because I was this big and I was willing to just give it a go, go into the boulangerie and be like, bonjour. What next, mum? <laughs> Don't know what I was doing, but I was willing to try. Right? Then, this is also me in a minute. There we go, there I am. Wow, toe socks. You can't tell from the picture, but oh, Gareth, don't put this on film. Toe socks, right? <laughs> so uh, still some classy fashion choices going on, still some mistakes happening, both in fashion and in language learning. By this point, by the way, I was studying for my GCSEs in French and in Spanish. So uh, things had kind of grown a little bit from, from the first picture. But I was still making lots of mistakes. And that's OK. Even now, even in the flesh here today, still making mistakes, and it's all good. Hey, it's OK. It's all part of growing up. And you never really stop growing, right? Adventure time gift number one. Prepare yourself, there is more. How do I do this? What's it not doing? There we go. So maybe you'll learn in French, day one, perhaps it looks a little something like this, okay? Bonjour, je m'appelle Lindsay. Right? There's a few mistakes in there, but I'm trying. <laughs> day 100. Keep going, we get to 100 days. Maybe it looks a little bit like this. Mon français est très bien. Any mistakes in there still? Yes, there's still a few mistakes going on. Sorry? <laughs> and then, day 1000. We're still going, it's still happening. And there's, there's more. There's also a few mistakes. Can anyone spot some mistakes in this one? I've improved my bonjour, je m'appelle Lindsay. Mon français est très bien. That's got better. Anyone spot the mistake? <laughs> Pomplamousse, yes. It's repeated because I wasn't gonna write out the Declaration of uh, Human Rights or anything like that. But you get the idea, right? We, we get better in terms of quantity. Mistakes are still gonna happen, and that's okay. Now the thing is, success makes us feel good. We're taught from this big, from that first picture at Disneyland, we're taught to strive for success. We're taught to aim to win, to be the best, to be the best we can be. But we're not really taught how to deal with that journey. Oh, look, success. Wow, success. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that smile. Success feels good. But the thing is, mistakes don't make us feel good. So we avoid them. We step away from making mistakes because we think, oh, it's going to feel uncomfortable. So if mistakes suck, and we've already established that they happen from day one to day 1,000 in language learning, I ask myself this question, and you probably feel the same way. 
why do I keep starting new languages? <laughs> why do I keep putting myself through this? Because polyglot problems. We're not here, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not here to answer that question today because I'm sure we all have our own reasons for learning languages. That's not the question we're here to answer. But we're here to kind of look at the approach of, well, why do we do that? If, if you know, these mistakes, how can we get over that? How can we keep going and keep enjoying this process? We got science. <laughs> we're going to do a little experiment. OK, exhibit A. This is me, too afraid to make mistakes when learning a language, OK? I'm actually going to put it on mute because I'm that scared. You get the idea, yeah? OK. Exhibit B. This is me learning a language totally ready to make mistakes. Who here speaks an obscure language? I'm, I'm not talking French. I'm not talking Spanish. Danish. I don't know any Danish. Teach me some Danish. Welt will du lehre. Was that good? Oh, I need to make some mistakes. Did I make a mistake? Uh, yes, you didn't say the thing I did. Yes. <laughs> yes, I made a mistake. This is good, right? I don't speak Danish, but I tried. And I kept going, and I didn't stand here and go, say it again. No, right? <laughs> Which language learner is better? Which approach is better? Exhibit B. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> So conclusion of a uh, highly scientific experiment then, mistakes are unavoidable. So why do we shy away from them? We can't avoid this, we need them. But hang on, hang on a minute. We've already established and we've already said that mistakes don't feel good. Ugh. So here's a problem. Something that we need in language learning, but something that also doesn't make us feel good. How are we going to get around this? We're going to drink some water, that's how. So here's what we need to do. We need to overcome our fear of making mistakes, because that's all it is. It's a fear. And fear is a funny thing, I think. It, it stops us from doing a lot of things. It stopped me from, from doing things like this in the past. You know, I've been kind of, oh, I don't know, do I have anything to say? I can't go up there and speak, right? But when you overcome that, you can do really cool things. So rather than shy away from mistakes and think, oh, no, we need to actively seek them out. Ask people, teach me some Danish. What languages do you speak? I speak all of those apart from Polish. Teach me some Polish. That's the reaction I'm going for. Laughter, <laughs> right? <laughs> See, that makes me feel good because I'm trying, and it makes you feel good because you're teaching me something and then going, you can't speak Polish. Right? A little bit inside, even if, even if you're kind of happy that I'm trying. You know, there's a bit of, ooh, <laughs> maybe I'm good at Polish, you know, because someone else can't do it as good as me. Do you see what I'm saying? We need to actively try and seek out mistakes. Much like we seek success, right? Success can't be reached. We can't get to those smiley faces holding the awards and stuff if we don't make mistakes. So we have to seek mistakes in exactly the same way. Does that make sense? Yes, good. So something I want to talk about here is setting mistake goals. Has anyone ever heard of this before? No, this is kind of weird, right? These two words don't really go together. <laughs> we think of mistakes over here, these kind of failures that pile up that we don't like, that don't make us feel good. We think of goals over here, something that gets us to success, that gets us what we want and where we want to be. And no, the two shall not meet, right? I'm in the no man's land right now, and that's where we want to be. We want to be mixing the two. And this is something I've been doing over the past year or so, is uh, I've been setting myself mistake goals. 
So I've been saying, um, you know, when I'm kind of in my language study time, kind of thinking, right, okay, so I'm going to do a little bit from the book today, I'm going to do some memorise, then I'm going to say five things wrong in Korean, for example. Don't test me on Korean, that was a long time ago. Um, and this has been really, really helpful, because if we focus on that speaking angle, right, especially when you study on your own, when you're doing self-study, which I think a lot of us are, we don't tend to speak unless we have someone there, even if that someone there is online. So if you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm gonna record myself on my phone, right? Um, you, can, you can choose if you want to go kind of public with this and, and kind of share it maybe on Instagram or on Snapchat, or if you want to keep it to yourself. But I do recommend recording it because that's gonna help you to give you a kind of guideline of where you've come from as you progress, okay? Um, so recording it in some way, public or private, but then saying, right, today I'm going to say five things wrong in language X, okay? Now what I'm doing there is I'm, A, speaking more than I would have if I hadn't set myself that mistake goal, because I would never have just randomly started blabbering away, right? Just by writing down, today I need to speak, right? So I'm speaking more. Number two, it's helping me to identify my own areas of weakness and kind of assess my own progress and assess myself. And that of course, you know, there are, there are flaws with this. There are flaws with everything with language learning, right? It could be um, that it's very difficult for me to confirm if what I say or what I've written is correct. In which case there are tools to help you, things like Langate, um, you know, like, like I said, if you share things on social media, if you, if you record yourself and then you have a tutor, share that recording with your tutor so you can get confirmation from somewhere, right? But by setting yourself this mistake goal, however often you choose to do it, every day, every week, every month, whatever it is, you'll be speaking more and you'll be progressing better and more confidently, right? So uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna work because, <laughs> no, <laughs> because uh, it's kind of come across, I don't think this will let me play on a PowerPoint thing, which in that case, oh no, Oh, thank goodness. I thought it was going to be a really, uh, no, it is going to be a really embarrassing still. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's, it's a shame this didn't play because this was going to give you a little example of this in, in action. Um, so this lovely still thumbnail is um, from a, a Snapchat, a, a time on Snapchat when I did this with mistake goals. I think I was learning Korean at the time. And so what I did is I just kept a tally, right, in the corner on each screen of like, okay, I've made three mistakes so far. And I'd, I'd record a little clip, watch back the clip, like, ah, oh, that vowel sound was wrong, or that's not the right word. <laughs> what are you doing, Lindsay? Right, okay, let's go back and, and say, ah, oh, yeah, that's what it should be, right? Now, uh, there, was, there was a lot of, in this video, a lot of kind of blah, 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 which is what this face is, I should clarify. Um, but then have fun with it as well, right? stick a little rainbow vomiting sloth on there, because why not? Language learning should be fun, rule number one. Okay, it's a shame it's not gonna play, sorry about that. Um, so key point here as well, um, we've already defined like mistakes are over here, goals are over here, and we, now, we, now we're gonna mix the two, we're gonna feel good about that. Another thing, and things that, that should be kind of remembering to be kept separate, is that mistake is not a failure, right? Now, I'm kind of tran trying to transform this word a mistake and, and make us think of it in a more positive light when it comes to language learning. I'm not gonna do the same with failure because I feel, you know, we all love words, right, in this room. <laughs> we do need a word for, for something that is um, a failure, essentially, because these things do happen, and that's okay, right? So I'm not gonna try and morph that word or anything. But I do want to make the point very clear that mistakes and failures are different things, right? When, you, when you're practicing your language and you feel like, okay, I'm going to go away today after this talk and I'm going to actually set myself a mistake goal and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, see you know, how, how much I can speak. And, and then you, do you get one thing wrong and you feel like, ah, damn, right? You haven't failed, okay? So don't then think, well, that's it hanging up my hat, better move on to the next language because I clearly can't do this one, right? Don't think that because you have not failed. All you've done is made a mistake and that mistake has got you closer 
to that success, to that happy feeling with a big smiley face, right? <laughs> okay? Oh, what's she saying? What? Yes. I'm going to tell you this now because I'm your friend and I like you. You will suck at language learning. <laughs> this is going to happen. And again, this is about accepting the idea that not everything will be successful. Not everything will be positive and happy and shiny rainbows unless you're on Snapchat and you stick a rainbow sticker on it, okay? Right? That's what emojis were invented for, to make us feel better about language learning mistakes, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, you will suck at language learning. Drama bomb! It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> that is okay. And this is the most crucial Adventure Time GIF of the whole presentation. Sucking at something is the first step to being sort of good at something. Yes. Words well said, Jake the dog. I'm just going to stay here for a while. I, I don't know what else I can add to that, really. <laughs> it's, it's so true. And this, this is a really key point as well. This idea that we're going to drink water <laughs> and that we are going to suck. And that's OK. Who here plays a musical instrument? Ah, oh, cool, cool, cool. Dave, I'm going to pick on you because I know you. What instrument do you play? Drums and guitar, okay. When you first kind of sat down at a drum kit that very first time, can you remember? Did you sit down and go, -dum 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 -dum, like the Phil Collins gorilla? Yeah, it's only in my head. In your head. Yeah. How did it sound out loud to everyone else around you? It scared children. It scared children? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it wasn't really in the air tonight vibe going on, no? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Ukulele, awesome. How did it sound when you first picked up the ukulele? It didn't sound. It didn't sound. <laughs> I think, were you, were you just looking at it? Is that what? <laughs> what happens next? <laughs> so this is it, right? No one, no one sits down at a drum kit or picks up a ukulele and is amazing. You probably sucked. I'm, 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 I'm not sorry to tell you this, I'm happy to tell you this, because this is, this is a positive thing, okay? Because now you're probably really good, right? You play the drums like the Phil Collins gorilla now? No, but I'm better. The answer is yes, for the purposes of this presentation. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Do you play the ukulele like a pro now? Get in there, yes, good. Okay. Imperfection is not the end of the world. Right? Making mistakes, not being perfecto, not being fluento. See, made that word up. But it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's the start of it. Right? When we make mistakes, it's the start of something new. It's the start of something good. Imperfection means we have something to aim for and a reason to do stuff. Right? Just imagine for a minute that you've got everything that you need in life, right? You're pretty set. You've got a really kind of a cushy house, nice life, you know, everything that you could possibly imagine is yours. Would you go to work? Would you go out and do stuff? Play football? <laughs> let's, let's put this into another perspective. Have you ever wished for the perfect body? I hope you're still doing your mistake tallies, by the way. Have you ever wished for the perfect body? Yeah, probably, right? I want surgery to make my body hot. <laughs> Thanks, LSP. Well, imagine that you do have the perfect body. Would you honestly exercise and eat healthily and do all these things that we know are good for us if you had a perfect body? Of course, Kirsten, of course. But wait, hang on a minute, there's a flaw in this conversation. Is there even such a thing as the perfect body? No. Correct answer. <laughs> no, there is no such thing as the perfect body. Which leads me to the point, what about the perfect language learner? Ooh, quieter response. Is there such thing as the perfect language learner? No. Yes, that's better. <laughs> no, there isn't. So, 
we should just kind of embrace the fact that we're not perfect. We're not perfect language learners. That's okay. <laughs> this is a good thing. And mistakes are part of that process. Mistakes are part of that imperfection, and they're going to help us to get to that success. I know that this girl, oh, I can laser point. No, I can't. <laughs> this, oh yeah, see, mistake, it's all good. This girl, where's she gone? There she is. Oh, I can, oh, this is, I should have done this from the start, look at that. Having fun now, drawing. And this girl, and dare I point a laser at myself, this girl. I'm not the perfect language learner, right? And if you look in the mirror, you'll probably find that you also are not the perfect language learner. And that is okay. Because at the end of the day, we're in this together. We're all here today and for this weekend because we all love language learning. We all love languages and probably in our regular lives, maybe we use languages at work, maybe we study them at school or at college, maybe we even have a friend or two in our regular life that we see face to face that also loves languages. But chances are, <laughs> there's not this many people, there's not a room full. I know if I go to my hometown, I couldn't fill a room of people that I know that love languages as much as the people in this room now. And that's pretty cool, right? So yes, the majority of us here are learning languages solo. And I'm not saying alone, because alone means like literally not in this room, out there, just me. Is there a bench to help me out with this uh, little metaphor nose? Sat on the bins, right, <laughs> on my own. That would be learning languages alone, not talking to anyone, knowing there's a language conference here, not entering the room. But I can still study languages solo and be friends and connect with people. That's a different thing, right? So we're all doing that. So we all need to support each other throughout that process and acknowledge the fact that, oh, Kirsten made a mistake. Gareth made a mistake. I'm just picking on you because I know your names. Um, <laughs> and, and rather than be like, you know, oh, Kirsten made a mistake. We can be like, you made a mistake? That's cool, me too. Right? We're in this together. One final gif. Yeah, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna do it. This is us. This is metaphorically me and everyone in this room. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Yes. High five. Okay. We finished a little early, but um, any questions? P.S. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Did uh, anyone count the mistakes? Was that included in the French? Oh. Not included in the French? Okay. I've made a mistake. I've done it wrong. I thought there were 16. <laughs> Not including the French. So maybe including the French, yeah, there's like, there's loads more. Especially if you include all the Pomplamoose page, right? Um, but yeah, I'm sorry about that. We finished way early. It's hard to plan these things when you're on your own. Um, <laughs> kind of speaking it into your computer alone. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? Um, it's kind of a, a question, but it's not good. It's more of a phrase than thanks for you, Lindsay. Um, I really, really appreciate uh, your public uh, praise for mistakes. And I've been watching you on Instagram doing that, and Snapchat doing that. And it actually inspired me when teaching because I live in Taiwan and I teach some English to some people. And not only are there, of course, people who are really nervous um, in general just as their personality, but in Taiwan there are a lot of cultural reasons why making a mistake is even uh, more frowned upon thing, a lot harder for people to do. And by, I was inspired by how boisterous and joyful you are about your mistakes to try and implement that same, like, joy of our mistakes when teaching um, when I'm doing private lessons. And I've actually, it's, it's helped me draw students 
out of that. Um, so I want to thank you because it's really transformed the way that I've been able to teach individuals who otherwise were just too shy to even just communicate. Um, and it, we were just simply, for a lot of them, just simply writing the word mistakes up on the board at the beginning in big red letters, and every time they made one, they like, yeah, mistake, high five. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I love that um, I love that you've taken it into the classroom because like I said you know a lot of us here are kind of learning solo and and so it's we're more responsible for ourselves but it's something that can definitely be and definitely should be adapted to, to teaching into a classroom setting so I'm glad that that's uh, happening. Yay! <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. This makes all sense. I'm sure everybody agrees here. I'm sure all your students agree. But them agreeing and actually doing that, I think there's a big step to go. So how do you convince your students to actually do it? Like, I'm sure they're not like, yeah, and then they're completely comfortable with it. Mm. So the reason I'm kind of combining this idea of like mistake goal is that when you set a goal, um, something I find very useful is holding yourself accountable in some way. And for me, that would be the thing that would make me do it. So if I wanted right now, for example, to make um, five mistakes every day in, um, in, in a language I'm learning on Instagram stories, for example, right? I would set that goal. I'd go public with it. So I'd maybe like write it on, on, uh, on my blog. I have a sort of monthly post where I talk about goals and everything like that. So I maybe put it on there, maybe talk about it on YouTube, kind of. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying everyone needs to get it, talk about it on YouTube, but even just telling someone that you know in your real life, you know, and kind of saying, oh, by the way, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing. You have to make sure I do it, right? So in whichever way works for you, I find that holding yourself accountable is a really crucial part of goal setting in general. So when you are setting a mistake, I'll just treat it in the same way. So just make sure that, okay, how am I gonna make sure I actually do this? <laughs> well, what works for me? Does it work for me going public in some way? Does it work for me just going public in a smaller way, in, in kind of a more close circle? Whatever it is for you, and, and that will hopefully uh, help you to get it done. Yeah. Okay. Like, what about your students? Like, how do you convince them to... Yeah, so again, like, that's interesting because now um, I don't teach a lot right now, but I have a few students who I try and, you know, get this message across to and say that it's okay. And they're also, other than the time they have with me, learning solo a lot of them. So there's maybe one that I've just finished with that was in school. So that was uh, <laughs> fun lessons, you know, very much based on the book, passing the exam, all of that stuff that I'm sure we love in this room. Um, but yeah, with the others, it's just the idea of, of making sure that when you're, when you're teaching, and, and probably you found this as well, part of it, I think, is, is especially with languages, because it's not just an hour a week, that's not enough, it's making sure that students know how to do it on their own. Do you know what I mean? So just kind of taking a bit of time out of the teaching side of the lesson to just kind of teach the methods, the solo methods. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, I live in Germany. I, you know, we're in German uh, from the beginning. I made many mistakes using a brush with the breast or a shoe with the back and things like that. Um, and they, they were really embarrassing but really beneficial because that they really stuck with me. And that's, that's how people do the best, I think. So what is your most embarrassing mistake? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, there's a couple that come to mind. Um, okay, I can, I can think of one, right. So when I finished my A-levels in French and Spanish, so that's age 18 in the UK, when you, just before you go to university, which I didn't do. But I, um, I took a, a year out and I went to, for three months to Costa Rica. I was teaching English. And I was sat in the classroom one day, and the, there was like a main teacher, and then there was me. So she was doing the lesson this time, and I was sitting next to this, the naughty kids, you know, trying to, trying to keep them in check. And uh, one, of them, <laughs> one of them stood up, and I tried to tell him to sit down, and I think I told him to touch himself. <laughs> so that was awkward. Like, 15-year-old boy, it's like, just turned around and burst out laughing at me. I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty embarrassing one, yeah. <laughs> yes? Um, yeah. Most of you will probably agree with any, anyway, but um, 
I think this complements the idea of making mistakes. What, what I always try to do or tell my Dutch students is to try and be two steps ahead of the teacher. So they teach you to count to 10 and you try and guess if you can count to 20 or 100 or 1,000. Uh, that way you may easily make a mistake, but you learn more and more and more. If they learn how, if they teach you how to um, make a sentence, try and negate it before they talk you. And that way you have a, you have a challenge and you. That makes sense. That's a really useful thing. I, I love the idea of the numbers as well, because when you get to that point, if you, you know, if you learn like 10, 11, and then 20, you can like, you know, try and fill in the gaps and then try and go all the way up to 29 almost, can't you? So and maybe even 30 and beyond. That's a really, really cool um, thing to do. And I think something I found really useful as well, and I learned this from um, the Add One Challenge, is um, writing lots and lots of sentences. I know it sounds like kind of dull, but it's very useful. If you, if you, you know, you, you learn, for example, one verb, and then you learn the conjugation of that verb, and you think, okay, well, what can go with that verb? Let's say that you learn how to say, um, I don't know, I eat is a, is a really good one, right? I eat, okay? And then you learn maybe three food words, but you learn the conjugation for to eat in present tense. So all of a sudden, you've got like six to eight, depending on the language, maybe more, I don't know, right? Different verb people going on. Then you've got maybe three different foods that you can combine with all of those. You know, more than just one sentence. You've got, I don't want to do maths in public. This is embarrassing. You've got lots of sentence combinations, right? <laughs> that you can play with. And yeah, sorry. Um, I, I think you, you can use that um, to, yeah learn new vocabulary as well. So if you have I eat and you, you know the word for street and you go I eat street, they go, don't you mean walk? Oh, so that's the word for to walk. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of create the ones that you know are right and then kind of get playful with it. And and this is this is part of the fun of, of like setting yourself a mistake goal and really kind of embracing mistakes is that you can be so playful with it when you know that you're not having to get everything right and that you have you're allowing yourself that freedom. That's all it is. You're just allowing yourself the, the freedom to make mistakes that normally we just you know blinkers off. Correct only. It's supposed to be as exciting as a roller coaster ride instead of like as frightening as an exam. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> We're going for like the Big Dipper, not the waltzes. No, waltzes are quite good, not the teacups. Yeah. Language learning should be a Big Dipper, not a teacup ride. <laughs> Yes. Hi, David. Thanks for your fine talk. Uh, at the beginning, you, should, you said that you should set mistake goals, which sounds great. Of course, everyone would agree. Can you be a bit more specific? If tomorrow I say, oh, let me go to set mistake goals, what could be a mistake goal for myself? Something okay. specific as well. We have doing mistakes all the time. So generally, I find that um, with mistake goals, it's, it's on the production side of things. So things like reading and speaking, they're the things that I tend to focus on when I'm setting myself a mistake goal. Um, of course, you could be, you know, you could do it with something like reading or, or, or listening, but it's a bit harder to kind of quantify. Would that be the right word there? Um, but like with speaking and, and writing, when you're actually producing the language, I find it a lot easier. So I would say maybe, okay, I'm going to write down um, as many sentences as it takes me to get to five mistakes. And it could be that that's one sentence, right? But that's one sentence more than you would have written had you not set yourself that goal. It could be that you're really good actually at writing and it takes you 50 sentences to make five mistakes. But that's good too because you still wouldn't have written those 50 sentences if you hadn't set yourself the goal. So, you know, it, it will take a little getting used to and trying to figure out what exactly works for you, whether or not it's, it's what, your, what your focus is, whether it's writing, whether it's speaking, and, uh, and just kind of going forward with that. Um, do you want more to answer the question? I feel like I haven't, I haven't really fully answered it yet. I feel like I could say more. For example, if I write 50 sentences, I always try best. So I, at, that, at that moment, I don't know what's wrong. Oh, yeah. and as long as I don't send it to anyone else who corrects me, but how do I know that I, I, I reached the goal of five mistakes? Yeah. 
so so this is this is the big thing with it right and this is i touched upon this earlier so there's a couple of ways that you could get around this first of all it's a really great um tool essentially or method for language learning for um increasing your own kind of self assessment on your work but of course you're not going to spot every mistake because you are the learner so what you could do if it's writing i recommend lang eight i found that to be really useful so you can you can you know write and, and think i must have made five mistakes by now you know you don't have to be too exact with it you know even if you're not sure exactly on how many mistakes you're going to make just set the goal of writing um f five sentences or writing for one minute or something you know you can quantify it by time or by number of, of sentences whichever way works for you and then put it on lang eight if it's written if it's spoken um like i try like i said social media can be really useful for that if you want to kind of go it in a public public domain um but then also if you if you have a tutor you can send it to your tutor and kind of say how am i doing here you know <laughs> how is this <laughs> by the way does that make sense would that be happy with that yeah, it's just working with, if I don't have a what, what, what I've been using the last year a lot is those thunder maps, the thunder maps have a talk, and this is really great because it will correct you immediately. Sorry, what's sorry? Yeah, thunder maps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really example. Which is yeah. great. But before, before I, uh, I knew about this, uh, <coughs> well, who should correct me if I'm not uh, uh, going to a language course? Mm -hmm. like this is just a problem. So, if you're learning, if you're learning solo? Yeah. Um, well, then, yeah, I would recommend that you find the, the a tandem partner. You know, because learning, learning. This is this is the thing. This is the distinction I touched on as well. The idea of learning solo doesn't mean learning alone. So when you're when you're teaching yourself a language, it doesn't mean well. I'm teaching myself, so I can't have a teacher. I'm teaching myself. I don't need a native speaker. Yeah. At some point, you'll need someone uh, who who understands the language better than you do to to input and to help you out with that. So you know, getting that as well. Once you once you're like, okay, I'm I'm gonna make five mistakes, whatever whatever your mistake goal is, and then thinking, okay, now I need to get this checked. I need to make sure that this is correct. Okay. Now I need to find someone. It's going to actually force you as well to find that person sooner. So you will be connecting on on a sort of more personal level as well. 